Well, greetings, Series 24 test takers. This is Dean Tinney coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. Um, I'm calling this a tutoring replay, kind of. <laughs> what I mean by that is I finished a session, our session with uh, this candidate who wanted to go over these questions. And uh, when I have a reason to do so, sometimes I record them with their permission, put them on the, on the channel. Uh, other times I just make up the use of the slide deck or content to, uh, you know, help others who may have some of the same questions. So basically, these are the questions we went over in their hour tutoring session. I'd like to go over them with you and then post to the channel. Maybe it'll be helpful. Uh, good news. There's more content coming. I do have permission from Kaplan to explicate or do a take a final, a Kaplan 24 final. I can talk about it kind of like what I'm going to do with these questions here. Okay, so let's get started. I highly recommend, I highly recommend that you uh, try and make your own exhibit, particularly on Series 24. So the inside market, you should definitely know the inside market is the highest bid and the lowest ask. You know, I guess what I'm doing here is just building my own little exhibit before I jump into the question. It says to me it's 2115. Uh, 2135. I would definitely know, by the way, if this is a NASDAQ stock, we don't know if it is, but if it is, and we can just see the inside quote, we have a level one NASDAQ data feed. And the size of the quote, that's called the size is 10 by 10. That represents 10 round lots. So I'm going to get that going on my uh, scratch paper. A market maker A is quoting the stock at 2105, 2135. So again, I like to make my own exhibit. 2105, 2135. And as much as I uh, keep telling people, uh, you know, about this situation, you know, this is what people get hung up on, you know, and I don't know, if, again, I don't want to send out negative vibes, but, you know, if you're a mutual fund person, you come from the package product, uh, uh, part of the business, maybe this, you know, freaks you out a little bit. Now, if this is a market order, we don't know what kind of order it is, but remember the market makers buy at the bid. Now that's important. And market makers sell at the ask. And if a customer gives me a market order, he's gonna be on the opposite side of this. So if it's a market order, the customer is gonna be buying at 2135 and selling at 2105 if it's a market order. So the way I think about it is the customer is on the opposite side of the quote if it's a market order. So, you know, typically we say the customer sells here and the customer buys here if it's a market order. Now, where you got to be careful is if it's a limit order, the customer, in fact, let's just put that, uh, let's make a little note here. I'm trying to get myself a smaller font. So the market order goes over there if it's a market order. And again, as I said, I would make my own exhibit. Now the challenge is, the challenge is if it's a limit order, then the customer is gonna be on the same side. So let's get that going, let's get a different color. So there's going to be a customer, Let me get a different font size here. Customer buy limit. If you need to, if you're a package product's been years or since you've done this, you might want to go to the channel in the series uh, seven uh, playlist. And there's an overview of orders and you know, maybe you need to lay some old base, so to speak, maybe this is not something you've done in a long time. And so what I mean by this, whoa, I found out, see, the other good thing about having a process is when you have a process, you can catch, you know, your own mistake. So here I have, I'm just noticing now that I got over here, I just made it on my exhibit. Whoop. I got a problem right there. Right, because uh, here I had customer sells and customer buys, right? So let's just show that to you again, right? 
I, that should say customer buys with the market over over here. Let me get my little, right? That's a mistake on Dean's part. Now I caught myself because I have a process. You know, my process here is I'm designing a my own exhibit, so to speak, before I jump into the question. Now I realize that you might have a time constraint doing this, but in practice questions, this is worthwhile because if you keep doing this, you'll get better at, you know, again, designing your own exhibit, so to speak and uh, know what's going on. Oop. So let's get this done again, boom, boom. And so the market order is where that's at. Let's get back over here. And customer selling, it goes over here. So he's got, the customer is gonna be on the same side of me basically is what it meant. I, I take the market maker's perspective. So what I mean by that is, you know, I. I want to be inside looking out as a test taker, you know, and not, you know, outside looking in. That's where most of the people have a problem with the perspective of the quote is from the, the market maker. All right. So this uh, market order, we said customers are going to buy at the ask and customers going to sell the bid. Okay. So on with the question. So we're doing a lot of work here on the setup. The market maker accepts a customer order to buy 300 shares at 2110. Now the next point is, it's not the customer's responsibility to tell me that's a limit order. Whenever the customer specifies a price, it's a limit order. So the next thing we got to do is say, okay, so this is a customer order to buy. And so that's a customer limit. As we said, if it's a customer limit, the customer not a market order, if it's a customer buy limit, which this is, the customer is going to be on the same side of the quote as me, not the opposite side. Remember, with a market order, the customer sells at 2105 and the customer buys at 2135. Uh, by the way, it says my size for my quote is 10 by 10. I didn't put that in there, so let's put that in there. That may or may not be meaningful. So 10 by 10. And what that means in English is I'm willing to buy 10 round lots in my inventory at uh, 2105. I'm willing to sell 10 round lots out of my inventory at 2135. All right, so now it says 2110. So now what I have to do is say, is the customer want to buy the stock at my price or better? My price from the market maker's perspective. I wanna buy the stock at 2105 and the customer wants to buy the stock at 2110. So he's willing to pay more than I am. Now, if the customer is willing to pay more than I am, right, or the same, then I have to display the quote. So, you know, if he was going to give me 300 shares at 2105, he'd be sharing the inside, uh, my quote with me, and that would have been 13. And that was this tutoring uh, student's problem. She said, why isn't it 13? I said, well, it's not 13, because he's actually got a better price than I have. And so what I'm going to have to do is display his order, his limit order, to the marketplace. Now, outside looking in, it looks like I, the market maker, want to buy the stock at 2110, but no, this is the customer who wants to buy it and I have to display it. So when does it mandatory to accept the customer? Well, we, I think the confusion here is it's not mandatory, but it's, I can send it to a different market center if I want, but that's not really got anything to do with answering this question. What we have to do here is say, okay, well, the customer has a better price than me. And so I'm going to uh, change the quote and boom. And so now I'm going to display my customer's limit order. And the limit order is going to be 2110. And that's on the bid side. Now remember, if this was a, a customer uh, sell limit, it would be on the other side. It'd be very similar. I don't have any responsibility on the ask side. And again, now I got to change the size to reflect. Whoop. I'm sorry about that. I'm trying just to erase this little piece here and it's erasing everything. Oh, well. Anyways, you get the idea. Let me just, I'll just put it this way. I'll do it with black. It's going to be three now, right? Okay. So. I uh, hope that was helpful. I hope that was helpful. Let's go to our next one. Let me clean up my slide.
a uh, market maker, a market maker inside market is 10 highest bid, lowest ask 1050. A confirmation of the customer buy transaction at 1070 shows a 10 cent markup. Uh, this confirmation, well, remember the markup is always based on the uh, inside quote. So if it's a mark up, the ask represents the mark up and the bid, it represents the mark down. So, you know, 1070 from 1050 is 20 cents. So the answer here is D. Uh, I don't think you're going to have to do practical application of this on the test, but you should definitely know markups are based on the inside quote, which in this case is going to be the lowest ask. Markdowns are based on the inside quote, which would be the uh, highest bid. Since the lowest ask is 1050 and we did the trade at 1070, that's a 20 cent markup. So D is the correct answer there. A uh, market maker is quoting A, B, C, D at 31, 31, 20, 12 by five. So again, what I like to do is before I do anything, just get comfortable with what I'm looking at. You know, market makers buy at the bid and they sell at the ask. So what I'm gonna do here is again, make my own exhibit. 31, and that's market maker buys, and that is my bid. And then I'm gonna put that there for my exhibit. And then it says my ask is 31.20. And uh, let's see, that's where I market maker sells. And, and then my size of my quote, you know, a lot of ways to display the size here. They're saying 12 by five, so I'll put that over here. So that means I'm willing to buy 12 round lots into my inventory at uh, 31. I'm willing to sell five round lots out of my inventory at 3120. Uh, the inside market is 3110. So 3110 is the highest bid. And 3120 is the lowest ask. And they tell me the uh, size on that. They give me the size. Let's see if they give me the size. Uh, they don't give me the size on the inside uh, quote. Uh, a market maker or a uh, customer order to sell. So again, remember, it's not the customer's responsibility to tell me that that's a market order or limit order. Customer specifies the price. It is a limit order. So here the customer has specified the price. And so this is a sell limit. As we said, and again, this is the key. You know, the key to getting these things uh, on the right track is to say, okay, well, if the customer is giving me a buy limit, we said if it's a market order, the customer goes on the opposite side. But if it's a limit order, the customer goes on the same side. So, right, if it's a buy limit, it's going to be on the same side as my bid. And here, it's a, if it's a sell limit, it's going to be on this side. And so now what I got to do is look and see what the customer, I think the market maker's perspective is the best perspective. So inside looking out. So my I want to sell out of inventory 500 shares at 3120. And the customer wants to sell at 3118. Damn him. You know, he's willing to sell at a lower price than I am. And so again, the rule is if he the customer wants to sell at my price or better, this case better. But if it was even if the customer had said sell 200 at 3120. I'd have to update that to be uh, 700 shares at 3120. I'm willing to sell 500 for me and 200 for the customer. It's a limit order protection. By the way, if that was the case, it's not in this question, but if it was, then I would have a responsibility to do whatever I do for me to do for the customer. All right, so let's see. So uh, it says market maker must. Yeah, it looks like since the customer wants to do this at a lower price, I'm going to have to update my quote and I have to display to the marketplace uh, that the customer is willing to do this at a better price than I am. So that's gonna be 18. And this is now going to be 200 shares. 
Boom. And so the answer is uh, C is in Charlie. C is in Charlie. So again, the key point, if it's a market order, the customer is on the opposite side of the market maker's quote. This is a market, ma uh, more market order. Customer sells at 31 and buys at 3120. But if it's a limit order, remember, customer doesn't have to tell me limit order. He's just got to specify the price. It's my job to know when a customer specifies a price that is a limit order. And limit order protection rules say, as a market maker, if I receive a customer limit order that's at my price or better, market maker, I have to either display that. There's other things I could do execute, but you know, that's what these questions are all about. Okay, let's do our next one. Let's do our next one. A uh, market maker's quote is 2685. So again, I'm going to put my exhibit, you know, I, I always want to get my exhibit going. So 26, that's my bid, is 2685. And that's what market makers buy. I'm a market maker here. So that's what I'm willing to buy that into my inventory. And my ask is 26 uh, 89. So I'll um, put that there. So that's what that looks like. Market maker buys at the bid, sells at the ask. And then the size is five by five. So I'm telling to the marketplace whoop, that I'm willing to buy five round lots into my inventory at uh, 2685. I'm willing to sell five round lots out of my inventory at uh, 2689. The firm, so now it's a market order. So remember with a market order, the customer is on the opposite side. So let's put that in here again. Boom. So now the customer is on the opposite side with a market order. Remember, limit order, same side, market order, opposite side. So it says here, customer, so customer market orders. So customer, that's important because, boy, again, if you don't see this as a customer, you're going to be messed up. So what I mean by that is you got to say, okay, I'm looking at these orders are about the customer, not the broker dealer. And boy, that's really a key kind of a thing. This is a customer sell order, right? So the customer wants to sell 500 shares at 2689. And I said, well, sorry, Mr. Customer, I'm not willing to buy 500 shares at 2689. That is not my quote. My quote is I'm willing to buy. You want to sell, I get it. I want to buy 2685. So sorry, and not uh, something I have to do. The customer says he wants to buy 500 shares at 2689. So if the customer wants to buy and I'm willing to sell, yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to do that. Now remember, you know, maybe you want to in your answer set again, just make sure you understand that what you're looking at over here are customer orders, right? That's what the question says, but it's very easy to get uh, messed up on in terms of what's going on in that answer set. So yes, I'm going to have to do that. That's why the answer is B here. Uh, buy 500 shares. Customer wants to buy at 2685. I said, well, sorry, you know, I'm not willing to sell at 2685. I'm willing to sell at 2689. Customer wants to sell at 2689. No customer sells at the bid. So please note, this was not a uh, limit order. This was a market order. This was a market order. Okay, so let's see what our next one is. Uh, on trade date, Wednesday, October 8th, the customer purchases the stock of a company that's declared a 30% stock dividend. This is so frustrating, I know, as a test taker. But the only reason uh, she missed this one is because it's a stock dividend. And if it's more than 25%, now there's a lot of minutia. I don't really think this is a high risk. But if it's 20, uh, more than 25%, the record date, or excuse me, the X date is the day after the record. So that's the only reason that this is, uh, her answer was incorrect. So I just told you the X is the day after the record, which in this case is Thursday. And so do bills are going to be used on trades just prior to the X, because here it says you uh, bought the stock on Wednesday, October 8th. Remember T plus two, Thursday, Friday, we said that's the X date. So that 
you know, minutia on series 24, right? So uh, those are frustrating, I know. I mean, she has the whole derp thing. And, you know, she if this was a cash dividend, she would have been correct. Okay, uh, again, so important to read about whether there's a customer or not. A securities contract has not been completed by the selling broker dealer. This is not a customer. This is a broker dealer who has failed. You know, I, I don't know how much of the weeds you want to get on fails to deliver and fails to receive. But, you know, this the not completed by the selling broker dealer. So, you know, they're asking, what am I going to do? You know, I'm, this is called a buy-in, right? I say, listen, you have not delivered the security to me. I'm going to go into the open market. I'm going to buy the security you didn't deliver, you failed on. If it costs me more money, I'm going to expect you to make good on that. So it makes sense that I first have to give you an opportunity to fail, T plus two, right? And then I make notice to you and I say, okay, listen, I'm getting ready to buy you in. So by definition, the answer here is three business days. Now, uh, I don't know if I should help you out, but I think where she missed this, if this was a customer who's failed to deliver, that would be, she would have been right again. So if this question would have said, a customer sells securities and fails to make delivery, you know, when must the, under the customer protection rule, when must the broker dealer buy in the customer? And that would have been uh, 10 business days after settlement. So I think that's maybe where she missed this one. We talked about it, but you know, so, you know, if it's customer, it's a different answer than if it's a, you know, broker dealer. Now, uh, somebody had asked me to do a little riff on this. I'll timestamp this and I'll refer the person who asked for this discussion of fails, fails to deliver, fails to uh, receive and sell outs and buy-ins. This is a good, good way to rift on this. So anyways, uh, one other point here. If this was a sellout, right? So I'm the broker dealer. I sold to the security and you haven't paid me. And if you haven't paid me as a fellow broker dealer, I can sell you out immediately with no notification. So test issue is broker dealer related for a buy-in. I have to give the broker dealer, the failing broker dealer to buy you in. I got to give you notification three business days after settlement. I can buy you in. If it's a sellout of a broker dealer, I'm selling you out because you know, you haven't paid me for the security. I can do that immediately with no notification. Now, as we said, if it's customer related, the answer is different, right? And a customer related fail. If it's a customer who's failed to deliver, we buy in 10th business day after settlement. That's testable. And if it's a sellout, I can't do it immediately. So I can't sell the customer. The customer bought, he hasn't paid for it. I have to give him notice, T plus two, give him notice. And I buy him in two, late, two business days afterwards. So it'd be T plus five for the sellout of a customer. And the sellout gets a notification of both a buy in and a sellout. Whereas it's a different, so you're just going to your own mind do it. It's by the way, back office. You are going to be a general securities principal when you pass, but back office stuff, the uniform practice code stuff, isn't important as important as the trading questions. So you know, uh, uh, oh well. So I hope that was helpful. Um, market maker, market maker for X Y ideas as follows. So we have four market makers: uh, 2105, 2110. 2102. So we go through here. A market order to purchase. So remember, market order to purchase means it's going to be the ask. And so the ask is 2106 here. Now, this is called price time priority. So what we mean by price is the market maker with the most attractive price is at the front of the line. So the most attractive, the lowest asking price right now is 2106. And there's two market makers there. And when we were sharing that, market maker two and three, it's in time priority, meaning whoever was there first gets filled first. So market maker two was the first person, our first market maker that posted this lowest asking price presently of 2106. And market maker three then posted that they're willing. Now remember what market maker two is saying is they'll sell 200 shares out of inventory at 2106. Market maker three is selling, saying they'll sell 100 shares out of inventory at 2106. So there's you know 300 shares there in total. So what are we going to do? So first, we're going to hit market maker two will be hit for 200 shares. And then market maker three will be hit for 100 shares. And then we go into the reserve of market maker two for the remaining uh, 1,700 shares. So market maker two is going to 
sell 200 shares at their displayed quote and 1,700 shares from the reserve for a total of 1,900 shares. And market maker three is going to sell at 2,106. So the answer to this one is a C. Uh, Reg A has been updated to 75 million. So I don't know where this question came from, but Reg, Reg A, I don't think you'll see it, but it's now 75 million in tier two. It looks like a typo would have been uh, you know, 50, but I wouldn't worry about that. All right, here's our last one. Uh, the current quotes from various market makers are as follows. So, you know, what I like to do again is I like to make my own exhibit. So, you know, that would be, I guess, the takeaway from this. By the way, let me know if you find this as helpful. I'm trying to get you guys some more content, but, you know, the channel is mainly about, you know, other stuff, you know, SIEs and sevens and, you know, 66s. But uh, I appreciate your referrals, uh, you know. This is your peers. You're welcome to the upper room, <laughs> whatever you want to call that. Anyway, so the highest uh, bid over here is uh, 1760. And so I'm going to put that there. And then again, what I'm going to do is just try and enter the quotes and see what happens when I enter the quote if I end up uh, locking or crossing the market. Okay, so then I'm gonna look over the ask side and it looks like on the ask side, uh, the lowest ask is 1790. And boom, so that's the inside quote. So uh, what we're again concerned with here is with we don't walk or cross the market. Uh, market. So new market maker, so I'll just, put new market maker. So here comes Dean. I'll make that my MPID. And I'm getting ready to enter quote. I'm just going to enter the quote and see what happens, right? So if uh, I enter a quote, 1765, uh, let me get a little thing here. And let's see, I got our 1765, 1810. Boom. Uh, I don't think I have any problem there, right? Uh, the new highest bid, I actually took the lead here. I had 1765 with the highest bid, but I don't think there's any problem with the quote I just entered. It did not lock or cross the market. All right, so let's uh, try my next one here. Let's try my next one. So uh, the next quote, so I need one is one that is would work. Let's see, our next one is 1720. Uh, 1750. So, yep, I got a problem there, right? I now have a bid, 1760, that's higher than the uh, ask. And so I can't enter that quote. By the way, it's the market maker earning the quote that has the responsibility to make sure we don't lock or cross. Here, I didn't lock it, I crossed it, right? I got a, 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 a bid now that's higher than the ask. So two doesn't work. So one works, two does not. So I can eliminate any choice with two. Let's look at our next one. Next one is 18. Again, I'm just telling you, make an exhibit, these become a lot easier, I would hope. I'd hope that uh, you would agree with that. Uh, let's see, uh, there it looks like 18, 18, 10. Uh, yeah, again, I crossed the market, right? We got a bid of 18 and an ask of 1790. That's a problem. So that doesn't work. And let's see, our next last one is 1755. 1755, 1785. Uh, yeah, no problem. No problem. So one and four. Okay. So uh, let me know, ladies and gentlemen, what you uh, think about whether this is helpful. And thank you for our uh, Series 24 tutoring candidate who provided uh, some uh, difficult questions to go over. And uh, like I say, share, uh, share in their tutoring session, but share with you. And I'm calling, I don't know, I'm calling this a tutoring replay, kind of. <laughs> you know? So uh, in the comment section, let me know if you find this uh, worthwhile or not. If not, then I won't take the time to do it and um, can stick with narrative lectures and trying to get that practice final up for you. Uh, 
Stay dedicated, stay disciplined, stay organized, and you too can be a general securities principal.